Hey there. In this video, we are looking again at changing the period of sine and cosine functions, but this time we're looking at periods that are rational numbers, as opposed to fraction or a multiple of pi, like we did in the last video. Now, up to this point, when we've experimented with changing the period of a function, we've done things like putting a, a 2 in here, a number bigger than 1 like that, and the period's gone from being 2 pi to being pi, or we've put a 0.5 in there, a number smaller than 1, and the period's gone from being 2 pi to being 4 pi off the screen there. But all those changes that we make when we've put a, a rational number in here have been, the period has always involved pi. Now, sometimes when we model real world uh, situations, we want to have the numbers on the x-axis not being these, uh, what you might call, sort of weird numbers involving pi, not those irrational numbers. We want them to be rational numbers, or what you might think of as sort of normal numbers. And to be able to do that, we have to think about how we're going to change the period here so that the period is a rational number. Now, remember that the period is 2 pi divided by this b value here. So if the period is normally 2 pi, and we're going to divide it by the b value, the key here is that if we want the period to not have pi involved, we need to put a pi in here so that when we divide it, 2 pi divided by the b value, if this has a pi, the pi will cancel out and we'll get a rational period here. So what we're going to do here is put a pi in there, and then you see that the period is now is 2 there, because the period is 2 pi divided by this value of pi, so the period is 2. Now it's a, it's a rational number. We can maybe expand it a little bit to see it here. If we decided to make that a 2 pi in there, you notice now that the period is 1. So the period, here's one cycle of the graph right to there. The period is 1. Let's, let's stretch out the graph a little more there even. All right, and in fact, we can change the scaling on this graph so that we uh, that we have the the grid laid out not in terms of pi but in rational numbers. There, the period of that graph is one because it's two pi divided by two pi. When the equation has a b value that involves pi, the period is not going to involve pi. All right, that's the first key thing to realize here. Now. You can think about this. Maybe we'll stretch it back to there so we can see what would have been 2 pi. Maybe we'll move it over there. 2 pi is about 6.28. I might have it on there now. Pretty close. We'll do that a little bit more. 6.28 is about there. Like if I take this out of here, there's, there's 2 pi right there. So you can think about it as if I put a 2 pi in here, then I have compressed it by a factor of 1 over 2 pi. I've divided it by 2 pi so that the period is now 1. The thing is, we don't necessarily always want it to be 1. We might want it to be uh, a number like, like 5 or something like that, if we want the period to be 5, let's say. If we want the period to be 5, we're going to think of this as a two-part process here. We're going to put 2 pi in there, and that's going to scale it down to 1. But now this function, if we want to scale this function so that this uh, this point that's 1 here is now 5 times as far away at 5. What we need to do is replace this x with x divided by 5. If I want to divide this by 5, I need to put some brackets in here. It's not going to divide. It's going to divide the sine curve by 5. So I am going to divide that by 5 like that. And then that's my b value. My b value is 2 pi over 5 there. The fact that my b value is 2 pi over 5, it's kind of two parts. It's like multiplying the x by 2 pi, multiplying by a number bigger than 1, compresses it. So you saw that when it was just 2 pi, it compressed it to 1. And then when it's divided by 5, it takes that 1 and stretches it out to 5. So the thing to realize here is, number 1, when there's a pi involved, it's going to make it so that the pi is not involved in the period. and the second thing to realize is if the b value is written like this as 2 pi over something, that something is the period. When the b value is 2 pi over 5, 
the period is 5. If we put something else here, if we put 3, the period is now 3. One cycle is 3. If we even put some strange number like 4.7, the period is 4.7. If you write a trig function where it's sine of 2 pi over a number times x, that number is the period. So in fact, you can put a number here like p, and then you can create a slider for p, and then you can change the period. If I make this number a bigger number now, it makes the period whatever that b value is. That b value is 5 there like we had before, so the period's 5. If we uh, go up to, well, we'll stop at 6 there, 6, or if you make it smaller, stop at another strange number there like 2.3, that value is 2.3 there. All right. So to have a period that's a rational number, we're going to structure the equation as sine of 2 pi over the period times x. Now let's summarize that and use it in a few examples. So what we've seen here is our relationship that we've had before between the period and the b value is the period is 2 pi divided by the b value. But now we've kind of turned it around and we've said if the b value is 2 pi over a number, that number is the period. So in our equation, if we have 2 pi over something, that something is the period here. Or you could actually even rearrange that again. If you think of this as a formula that if we multiply both sides by p, you're going to end up with the b value times the period is equal to 2 pi. Those two things will always multiply to 2 pi. So any one of these three ways, whichever thing you're looking for, you can use. And then also importantly here is to recognize that if the period is a number involving pi, then the b value will not involve pi. And if the b value is a number involving pi, then the period will not involve pi. So if we're looking for the period for, for some functions here, if you recognize that these each have a pi involved here, none of the periods of those are going to involve pi. So we can just use the relationship we had up above in that the period is 2 pi divided by the b value. So 2 pi divided by 2 pi, that first one, if you have 2 pi there, of course, the period is 1. If we have just a pi there, period is 2 pi over pi, the period is 2 because those pi's cancel, right? And the last one here, 2 pi over 7, if the b value is 2 pi over 7, if we recognize that when the b value is 2 pi over a number, the number is the period, we can just write the period is 7. If we don't happen to recognize that, even if we use this formula, it's still going to work out. Because if we write the period is 2 pi divided by the b value, which is 2 pi over 7, we can simplify this. It's 2 pi divided by a fraction. 2 pi divided by a fraction, you can employ your grade 8 mathematics here, 2 pi divided by 2 pi over 7 is like 2 pi times 7 over 2 pi. Dividing by a fraction is like multiplying by the reciprocal. And those cancel, and you're just left with 7 there. Right? So either way you do it. If you just recognize that when it's written like that, that's the period, or if you go through the steps of simplifying that. So we'll draw one graph here of a sine function that involves a period that's a rational number. So we have two transformations that have happened here. We have an 8 in front, which is going to mean we have a vertical expansion by a factor of 8. In other words, the amplitude is 8. And then our period here, this b value says pi over 12. So let's not uh, jump the gun and say the period is just the number on the bottom because this has to be 2 pi for that to work. So really what you need to do is see that that is equivalent to if it said 2 pi over 24. The period is actually 24 there. So if you can write an equivalent fraction like that, then you can just read what the period is on the bottom, or you'll have to do something like what we did up there. If we know that the period is 24, we know this is a sine curve, and so we know it starts in the middle on the way up. So if we put our first point there, we know the period's 24, so 24 later it's there. We know that the amplitude is going to be 8, so we want it to be maximum right there, and then our minimum right here. And then we put some guide points down. So if we know that that's the, the period, 
and we know that we have our start and end point, then the middle is going to be there, and then halfway in between these first two, it's going to be at the top, halfway in between the second two, it's going to be at the bottom, and then we just continue that pattern there, and we can sketch the curve out like that. And try and hit the points without missing them here, and that's our curve for 8 sine pi over 12x. All right, so that's a look at changing the period such that it's a rational number and what the b value has to be to make that happen.